telling about nine people to Jesus Christ. I was so excited. I'd been signing them up to come to church that night. I had a partner with me. I said, you come by and get them at this time, and you come by and get them at this time, and you come by and get them at this time. There was a kid bebopping up the, uh, the alley there, and I stopped him, and I said, hey, what's your name? He said, Michael Jackson. I told Michael Jackson about Jesus Christ. Now, this was a shorter, more masculine Michael. And I told Michael about Jesus Christ. And right there in that alley, Michael prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come in his heart and save him. I went to a, I went to a trailer and I tucked a little flyer for our meeting in, the, in that trailer. And I took off. Had to race back to the church. We got there and I promised the preacher I was going to counsel with somebody for a little while for him. I turned to my partner and said, now go pick them all up. I thought I'm going to have a van full and we're going to get them all baptized tonight. Well, my man, he came back. He seen me and I was all excited, Brother Tennis. As a matter of fact, I had me a real hot sermon about sowing and how easy it is to do that night because I was going to preach up a storm and yeah, I'd do it and here's some people that God used me to influence for heaven and he came back and he said, Brother Owens, none of them came. I couldn't believe it. None of them came. He said, well, this one gave this excuse and that excuse. I said, oh, you should have tied somebody up and brought them. So I was a little discouraged. I preached my sermon. wasn't probably as hot as what it should have been because I've lost a little confidence there. But I got up and I preach. You ought to get people saved. You ought to influence people. Get them saved. Get them to the church. Get them baptized. Get them started in their Christian life. Well, a man had walked in the back right at the beginning of the service. I turned to the preacher. I said, Preacher, you know him? He said, I was getting ready to ask you the same question. I said, I don't know him. The preacher said, I don't know him. I preached, gave the invitation. That man in the back of the room left his, uh, his pew and he walked down the aisle. You know, I, I was amazed how quickly the preacher had wanting to Christ because they knelt there and they were probably there for just one minute. Got up, the preacher went back to baptize him. Brother, Brother Elwell went into the baptistry and this is what he said. He said, folks, this is one of the craziest stories I've ever met in my life. Or, or that I've ever heard in my life. He said, Brother Owens this afternoon was out soul winning out here in this, uh, this trailer park area. He had stopped in an alley and won a young man to Christ named Michael Jackson. Just beyond a hedge, this man, the one he's about to baptize, was working on his car. He was sitting there listening to the entire gospel presentation, and when Michael prayed and asked Jesus Christ to save him, this man got on his knees in his driveway, prayed, and asked Jesus Christ to save him. This man had come running around the end of the hedge trying to catch me, but I jumped in the car to run back to the church. He said he went to the trailer, and he, he grabbed a hold of that flyer that told where the meeting was, brought himself to church, parked it in the back pew, walked down the aisle, and they baptized him. Let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit of God gets involved, you can't stop the salvation of a soul. But you don't have to do it on your own. You're saying, Brother Owens, what happened? I don't even know what happened. God wanted that fella saved. I mean, if God can save Michael Jackson, God can save anybody. Hey, you need, to, you need to realize something. It's the power of God that will help you to fight in this war for the souls of men. You ask Him for your, his, his power. And some of you, what you need to do is claim it. By faith, decide He gave it to you. By faith, you ask Him for it and say, All right, I've got it. I'm going to go do this thing. God wants you to have His power. Don't wonder if you have it. Claim it and then go exercise it by faith. I believe this. I believe right now, in this service, God is speaking very deeply to the hearts of men. I by faith believe that the Holy Spirit of God that I talk to over and over and over again all day long in my life, I'm constantly saying, oh God, use me. God, use me. Help me to say the right words. Help me to smile at the right time. Help me to dress exactly the way I would dress. Help me to go up the right road and down the right road. And oh God, use me to influence people. I just happen to believe that God right now is answering my prayer for His power and something's happening down inside you. Because that which is not a faith is sin. I believe something's burning down inside you right now. I happen to believe some of you that had no plan of letting God get into your heart today, something's beginning to tingle down inside you and you're saying, I don't understand this. I am more involved right now than what I thought I'd get in this sermon. I came in here to do my usual, you know, cross my arms, lock my heart, and not let him in, but something's happening. I believe it's happening right now. I claim it. 
I believe it's happening. Do you know something? We need to witness to people. Bottled up in you is the power to help those that are dead in their trespasses and sins to be resurrected from that death unto salvation. Witness to people. Tell them about Christ. Claim the spirit for which you have requested God to give you. You know the spirit of God has fought all the imps of hell? The Spirit of God is not afraid of the toughest person in Washington, D.C., or Chicago, Illinois, or Los Angeles, California, even tougher than that, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is not intimidated by somebody's financial standings? Some of you are scared to death to tell someone about Christ because they make some money. They drive a nice car. They have a nice house. They boast of big bucks. They have fancy clothes. You're afraid to tell them about Jesus Christ, and that tells me one thing. You have depended on you to influence people for Jesus Christ, and it is the Holy Spirit that does the influencing. I challenge everybody in the balcony to come out of your hibernation and quit being ashamed of God and realize it is not you, sir, or you, ma'am, or those of you in the choir. You never saved anybody. You can't save anybody. It is the Holy Spirit of God, and He is not intimidated. If somebody is rich or not. Well, the only people I ever tell about Jesus are the poor little kids. And the poor little kids meet Jesus Christ too. But there are a bunch of other people out there that you're afraid of. But the Holy Spirit's not. Cut him loose and let him do a work. Cut him loose and let's go get some people saved. I remember preaching at the Randolph County Jail when I was a kid. 16, 17 years old. I'd go in and preach every Tuesday night five times. Once to the adult men that had just come off the streets. Once to the adult men that had been sentenced. Once to the adult ladies. Once to the juvenile boys. One night, I had been waxing eloquent. I always do. you got to hear my sermon on humility. It's the best. But I was preaching and I'd preach so long. <laughs> and I always do. But I didn't have enough time to preach to the juvenile girls, with, which was the fifth service. I walked into where the juvenile girls met. I pulled out a gospel track. I handed it to a girl that was behind the bars. I said, I'm sorry, I'll see you next week. And I had to leave because my time was gone. I went back to church the next, or I'm sorry, I went back to jail the next week. When I got there, I walked up to a girl, that very same girl that had been in jail, and I said... I'd like to show you how to be born again. If you'll step over here near the bars, I want you to read in the New Testament. She said, sir, I can't read. I said, I can read it to you. Just come over here and look at where the words are printed. She said, sir, I'm blind. I said, I'd like for you to know that if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven. She said, I'm already saved. I said, how in the world did you get saved? She said, last week when you were here. I said, how did you get saved last week when I was here? She said, you gave me a printed gospel track. I said, ma'am, you're blind. She said, yes, sir, Brother Owen. She said, I heard you preaching to the other people. She said, I, I long to know what you were telling those other people. She said, when you handed me that paper, I went to this other girl. She's out of jail now. I went to this other girl. She was mean and a nasty girl, but I said to her, would you please read this paper to me, please? I want to know what it said, she said. And that other inmate, she read to me that gospel paper that you gave me. And I went back to my room and I took that little paper and I got on my knees and I asked Jesus to save me. She said, I'm already saved. Now let me tell you something. I had cold chills all up and down my spine. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God had gotten into that thing. And though I did not have the time, and though she was blind, not even blindness would keep somebody from getting saved with the gospel. Track. Why? God wanted them born again. Some of you need to stop making excuses. Brother Owens won't change his message. It is the ultimate message of the New Testament. It is what the Old Testament was looking forward to. It is what we will all look back to someday. We're to be soul winners. We're in a war. 
I'll tell you something that helps some of you to begin to understand this 